Throwback Thursday. Today I have a really lovely bee-themed project to share with you. This is a Joyfold card. It's a design that's been around for a long time, but I changed the dimensions just to make it a little bit bigger. And there is a tutorial following this little uh, walkthrough, so stick around for that if you want to learn how to make this fun card design. So I used Craft Consortium's Tell the Bees, combined with digital images from Polly's Paper Studio, some from FMR Boutique, which is an Etsy shop online, and some from Gecko Gals, which is another Etsy shop. All three of those digital images are Etsy shops, and I will link that in my blog post. This is a super fun card design. I've just put a little brass clip up here, and this opens like this, then this opens like this, and then we have more on the inside. But we'll just take a look a little bit at a time. We have burlap panels here. We have machine stitching. We have wonderful antique bronze um, embellishments from Butterbee Scraps. We have this gorgeous little birdie flower array, um, some little pollen clusters in there. These are from my stash. These are Petaloo, and then lilac seam binding ribbon. So this opens like this, and then I have a layered bingo card with another image from Polly's paper and some little crown stickers, some more of this pretty vintage ruler. Over here, this is another digital image. This one is from Gecko Gals, and I've just layered this up with some ephemera tags left over from some of my Polly's Paper Studio card kits. And then the third opening is here, and I've created room for a photo over here or just to look at the beautiful paper. This craft consortium, Tell the Bees, is a gorgeous collection. And then the center panel is a double pocket. So on the top, I've inserted a couple of really sweet bee images from Gecko Gals. And you could also easily slip a photo in here or you could add um, a gift card or um, other small token. And then this larger pocket back behind holds a really sweet little tea wallet and room to write a sentiment. And I also included a honey stick. And then in here is a little gift tag. Um, so that's what this looks like. And it, it's a really, it looks complicated, but this is such a simple design. So hang around. We will build this together and you can make your own joyful card. Don't go away. This week, we're going to make a really fun fold card using Craft Consortium's Tell the Bees Premium Collection. You can still get this. It's all bee themed. It's very beautiful. I've used this quite a bit. So um, here is the card. Here's how we're going to make this card base. And to begin with, you're just this is called a joy fold card, I think. And I've just altered the dimensions a bit. I like to make big cards. Um, and a lot of times, tutorials that you can find online are for standard four by six or four and a quarter by five and a half. I like to go big. Um, and if I sound a little drippy or congested, it's allergy season here in North Carolina. And mine are fierce this year because of all the rain. So don't worry, I'm not sick. I'm just struggling with allergies. This is craft card stock. This is a pretty heavy weight. It's 110 pound and I've cut it to measure six by 12. And I've scored this at six and then at six and an eighth, just because I want a little tiny bit of an extra bend there. And then I trimmed off the long end so that it would be even. So that's the first part. And then the second part is from the same sheet of craft card stock, you're going to cut a piece that is five and a half by 12. And this one you're going to score at two and, and six and a half and six and five eighths. So that again, you have this little extra piece here. And then this is going to be a pocket. This little two inch piece is going to be a pocket. And I've just put some little gussets on the inside. These are just folded pieces of paper that are about the same height as the width of the, or the depth of the pocket. 
and then we're going to put an adhesive here and just glue this over, but not yet. So the first thing, the way a Joyfold card works, your smaller card base actually adheres inside the larger card base, and then you've got this lovely little flap over here on the side. So the first thing you need to do is cover, I kind of unceremoniously toss that. <laughs> um, the first thing you need to do is cover the inside of this card, and I prepared some papers to help us do that. These are cut to measure five and three quarters by five and three quarters. And the reason you wanna do this first is because if you wanna have an interesting background, um, you need to put this down first. So we're just gonna center this up. Straight is always good. Let me just make a couple little adjustments here. It's really hard to see that craft paper on the nonstick craft sheet. And then I have one that goes over on this side. Same thing, only this one I forgot to ink. I just like to lightly ink my cut edges with Gathered Twigs Distress Ink. And this is just a lightly patterned cream cardstock from a really old authentic collection. I think it was called Faith. Um, and it's part of, it. Was, they had a thing at the time called Foundations Cardstock. And that's what this was. It's really old. I mean, like you're going back to maybe 2013, 2014. All right. So on the right-hand side, I have this 5 and 5 eighths by 5 and 5 eighths panel of these queen bees. And these are going to go in the background. This is our background panel. And these are going to go right here. Just like that. Now you're going to bring in your smaller card base. And this is the only tricky thing, and it's really not even all that tricky. You have you want to adhere this so that it lines up with this outside edge of your card. You see that? So then this is going to close and this is going to flap over. You want to make sure you are um, even top and bottom and because I want this to be a pocket spot I'm only going to place my adhesives on the top the bottom and what will be this outside edge and I'm just going to line up my scored line And just get this straight. Put that down. Clean up any glue boogers. And see now this will close over this. And you can see why I added that little spine. It just kind of helps it makes that make that turn. And then on the inside of this, and over on okay, over on this, let's leave that for a second. Over on this left hand side, I just have a Another um, panel of designer paper that I'm going to put down here. Just simple. Like that. And I haven't completely figured out the design of this card. Mostly I wanted to show you how to do the base. Now we're going to cover the inside of this card. So I have another piece of this same cream foundations that I have cut to measure four and a quarter by five and a quarter. And we're going to lay this down. Just center it. Make sure I'm in frame here. As I move things around, it's easy for me to get out of frame. I just wanted to make sure you could see what I was doing. And this is a piece of that designer paper. Look how sweet. It's got lavender and bees. My lavender is just out of its mind this year for by five. I'm going to lay that down. Oops, but before we do, I wanted to put a little 
This is just a little scrap. I thought it was pretty. I'm just going to wrap this around and adhere it on the back. And then put a little adhesive. You could make that a tuck spot if you want to, but I don't. That's not where I want to go with this. So now we're just going to adhere this right here. Just that little touch of gold with the honeycomb I think is so pretty. And then this is a little um, bingo card. I don't know where I got this. It was just in my stash. I keep these little files of ephemera that I group by themes. And this was in my bee-themed ephemera. I see going to adhere this so that it's centered. And this is a digital bee image from Polly's Paper Studio. That's my friend Ginny Nemchak, who is an awesome digital designer. And this is from one of her card kits that I like to buy for myself as special treats. And she always puts so much in those card kits that I can never use them all. And this was a leftover piece that I just put into my B ephemera pack. So there is that page. And then over here, we're going to, for this side, this is short because this pocket is gonna cover. I didn't see the point of wasting a whole bunch of paper. So three and a half by five and a quarter, and then the patterned paper is about three and a quarter by five and an eighth. And we're just gonna put this down behind the pocket. Make sure I'm straight. And then we're just gonna put our adhesive on the top of these gussets fold over to make a really nice pocket. Then for the pocket flap, I have this beautiful wildflower print that is one and three quarters by five and a quarter. That's the cream paper, and then this is about, or honestly, truth be told, I just put it on here and marked with a pencil but it's about one and five-eighths by five and one-eighth. So the panel has to be longer than that. Yeah, the panel is five and three-sixteenths, but if you want to get that picky with measuring, you go right ahead. I do not. I just lay it on there and mark it with a pencil um, and move on. So this is gonna go right here. And now we've created this sweet little pocket for these digital images. And I believe these are from Gecko Gals. And they have a they have a lot of bee themed digital images. And I'll link all of these on the blog. Um, and those just tuck in the pocket. So that's really sweet. And I'll also add some other little treats in there. I haven't figured out yet what I'm putting in this pocket, but I'll get there. And on this side, I haven't figured out. We just had to get that part of the inside done so that we could do this, right? So now we're gonna move on to the cover. And, which actually you have almost like a double cover for this. Hang with me, you'll see it. So, this is this cover. Then this is gonna flip this way and there'll be a second cover. This one is five and three quarters by five and three quarters. And then I stitched um, just a really soft, um, kind of a shadowed pattern from the collection at five and a half by five and a half. And then the wildflowers are five by five. And I just stitched these up on my machine, added a little zigzag just for interest. And then this is just gonna get glued onto the inside cover of our card. And you could put magnets down at this point. Sometimes I do. I didn't think to do that because I'm doing a tutorial and 
Sometimes when you're doing a tutorial, things slip your mind, but you could have put a magnet to hold this flap to this flap, which would have been lovely, but it will still work just fine. Then this is another one of those Gecko Gals images, this beautiful um, lavender and bees. And then I'm just gonna glue, these are little tags from, again, Polly's Paper Studio. She always puts all these great ephemera bits in her kits. And I always have extra. So I just save them in my ephemera file. And when I get ready to make a card like this, I pull them out. So I'm just gluing those behind to add a little extra interest and putting this down. Now, if you didn't want to decorate this, I wanted to make this a decorated card, but if you wanted to make this a little mini folio, you could leave this completely blank and put a picture here. So, and you could get a four by four photo in here, you could put a bigger photo in here, and then a large photo over here. That's just another way to use it. But I wanted to make a decorative kind of home decor um, card. Now we're just gonna flip this over and you see how this kind of hides that. So it's like, ta-da, big reveal, really fun. Um, so for the cover, what I've prepared is a four and a quarter by five and a quarter of the cream. And then I stitched onto that a four by five panel of these queen bees, which I just love. And these are going to go down first. I always try to add my adhesive along the stitches um, so it'll hold better. So center that and lay it down. Then I stitched this little uh, kind of duotone wildflower print three and an eighth by four and an eighth onto a slightly larger piece of burlap paper and I think DCWV makes this I've had it for a long time in my stash but I'm pretty sure you can still buy the little six by six stacks at the craft store and this is going to go right here and I made a crucial mistake, but we can fix it. No worries. I wanted this little, this darling little handle to go right here. So I'm gonna lift this up. I'm gonna place this where I want it. Just thought this was a really cute detail. I'm gonna pierce through the holes and try not to pierce my finger. And then I've got these little brads that go through the holes. And you can see why I wanted that hidden. I don't want the brad legs showing. And fortunately, that glue had not set, so we can fix my mistake here. Make sure I'm straight. Little brad through. Just little details like this that I think make a project so special. Um, and it's just the unexpected, right? Oops, let me pierce that hole again. It's not quite big enough. I've got a stitch there that, there we go. Add those brad legs. Come on, little dude. All right, now we'll just put our adhesive back down. Add a little extra, so that will really stick. There we go, crisis averted. And then I like to just really press those down to make sure that those legs are really set. And you can use an acrylic block to do that. Just get in there and press it. Look how cute. I love that. Okay, 
And then I've just got this little scrap. This was a little scrap of the beehives. Um, this is two and three quarters by three and three eighths. Okay, so maybe it's, well, it's actually two and 11 sixteenths. This literally was a scrap. So I just thought, ooh, that'll fit. That's just gonna sit like this, and I want this up toward the top. Make sure I'm straight though. There we go. And then this is another one of Ginny's beautiful bee images. I just love this. Backed this with a little chipboard to add a little dimension. And this is gonna sit right here, like that. And I've got this lovely, this is also, I believe, from Ginny. Um, this lovely little vintage ruler. It's either from Ginny or if it's or it's from FMR, um, which is on Etsy. Um, and I'm honestly not sure which it is. So I'm gonna do this like this, and I'm actually going to, whoops, come on. But I think this is from Ginny. I don't know. Ginny does something like this. So it's either from Ginny or from Tracy Vanover at FMR. I'm not sure. But I'll link both. Um, because if you love bee stuff, FMR has a bunch too. A little dot of glue right there. So that's kind of fun, just an extra little interesting layer. And then on top of that, this I know is from FMR. It's from their bee. I'll link to it. It says Queen, the Queen. I put this on a little scrap of that burlap paper. And this is gonna sit right here. Love it. And then I have this funky little bee charm, which I just adore. This is from Butterbee Scraps. And um, because it's kind of concave, here's what I do. I put a little bit of glue, because uh, hot glue won't hold this in place, because it's metal. So I put glue in that little concave space, then I press in some chipboard, then I put my chipboard here, and I'm also gonna add, I'm using dry clears adhes dries clear adhesive because it, um, it actually holds metal, which is lovely. And then this is going to go just like that. I want that clock at a bit of an angle. And here's a good trick for you. I keep binder clips in the studio because they're really handy. I need a bigger one though. This will just hold that in place until that glue sets and I don't have to fret about it. I think we're ready to add flowers to this card. These are Little Birdie printed lens petals. And this is called gray, but to me it's got a wonderful lavender. And I just love how it looks. It picks up on the lavender in this patterned, in the patterned papers. So I'm gonna place one of these. Well, first I'm going to, hold on. These are some old Petaloo picks that I had in my stash. I'm just going to curl these ends around to get them out of the way. And I'm going to adhere these right here, being careful not to um, glue this shut, which would be not a good thing to do. And then I want to come in with some foliage and I want to place a leaf up here at the top. Going this way. And now I'm going to place this blossom up near the top. 
And again, you don't want to interfere with that opening. So be careful when you're placing these. It can be just a little bit tricky. And then I want to take one of these soft lilac ones. And I'm just going to kind of scrunch it a bit. And I want this one to go, I think, this way. I'm just going to lay this here and over toward the edge. And then I'm going to also scrunch this one down. Sometimes you have to spritz these with a little water, but usually if you just take your time, you can... Um, Close them up a little bit and I want to adhere this one so that it is underneath here so that they kind of cluster together like this. Make sure my door will still open. Whoops, well not with that clip on it won't but um, I'll take that off in a minute. I think we're okay. I think we cleared it. I, think I can probably take this off now so that I can open this. Okay, we're good. I'm going to lift these petals and come in with a puddle of glue. This is lilac seam binding ribbon from Really Reasonable Ribbon. And I'm going to just use the point of my scissors to push that knot into that puddle of hot glue. You really don't want to use your fingers to do this unless you have asbestos fingers, in which case, knock yourself out. Now I've got these little bead berry clusters. These are from Really Reasonable Ribbon. And I'm going to tuck these in with my layers just to add a little extra texture and dimension. And I've cut these. These come on a... These come in a bunch like this, and I've just cut them off. Tim Holtz scissors work really good for that. They cut through just about anything. And then one more up at the top. Just tuck that down in there. So there's our flower and bow cluster. That's really pretty. And I don't think we need to do anything else on the cover. I really like the way this looks. That's, that's beautiful. I may come back and spatter um, just some white paint over it. I need to think about that for a few minutes. And then, of course, you've got this beautiful image here. I might find some words from my Tim Holtz um, word strips and put those in there. And I might add some little buttons or something here. And then I need to figure out what to go in here, but I'll do that on my own time. You'll see the finished project and um, know how it all turned out. But isn't it beautiful? I just love this card design. It's it's like almost a folio. Um, and certain, like I said, you could make this a photo folio, but I wanted to make it a fancy card. So there you go. That's how you do this joy fold card in a larger format. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up because it helps other crafters to find it. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would love to have you along for the journey. I try to share a throwback Thursday post at least once a week on my blog. And at least once a month, I try to do a tutorial like this one for Throwback Thursday. And I'm always sharing tutorials and ideas on my channel because I like to share. So that's it for me, Kathy Clement, Kathy by Design. You can find a linked blog post link to supply list on my blog, which I'll put the link to that in the description box below. Now I'm going to get my craft on. Thanks for joining me. Bye.